everybody welcome back to another episode of make it simple season two yes i'm excited about it yes 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 well anyway make it simple is a a podcast where i break down either a scripture or a passage uh for easier understanding of the bible so we won't we don't make the Bible complicated. That's right. And in season two, we're going to be really focusing on real topics, real life emotions, okay? Feelings and just real life situations, okay? And today we're going to be talking about inadequacy, inadequacy. But before we go ahead and dive in, let's go ahead and open up with a prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so very much for waking us all up this morning and starting us on our way. Thank you, Father God, for using me as a vessel, Lord God. Spirit of God, flow through me, uh, speak to me and through me, Lord God, so that the people can understand your word and this message in the name of Jesus. Give us an ear to hear and a heart to receive your word, Lord God, so that we can apply it to our everyday lives. In the name of Jesus, we do ask and pray. Amen. 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 So like I said already, we're going to be talking about inadequacy um, because I'm sure a lot of us had felt in our time once or two times in our lives that we were not inadequate or adequate for something, right? We didn't think we were smart enough. We didn't think we were good enough. We didn't think we had the tools to, to do something, right? And do it well. Like, why me? And then you feel a, a, a feeling of fear. Uh, you feel a fear, a, a feeling of being scared. Um, you're timid. You're shy. Uh, you, 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 you just, you know, you're just so... Uh, anxious you have that anxiety because you don't feel like you qualify you ever feel not qualified for something um but you're being thrown into something and you have to do it anyways so we have a scripture here for that okay well it's more so a passage and when i read this years ago i was like oh my gosh this is so banging right so now i want you guys to hear it as well and some of you already know this 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 passage we're going to go come out the book of uh, first corinthians chapter one and we're going to go um we're going to start in verse 25 and we're going to move down all right so listen to this this is um this is paul talking okay and he's letting us know how God operates in a sense, right? So if, let's go down to verse 25. It says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised. God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. God in righteousness and sanctification and redemption that it, as it is written he who glories let him glory in the Lord so then we want to go ahead to chapter two because this is now Paul um, sharing his testimony how he was used and how he was inadequate for the job but God still used him in chapter two Two verse one says, and I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling in my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should be, should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So even Paul himself, who was a disciple of God, came to us to share his testimony, how he was inadequate for the job. He did not have persuasive words. He knew nothing other than that Jesus Christ himself was was Jesus and he died. He was crucified. That's all he knew. He knew nothing more, nothing less. He said, but I I still did it, basically. I still did it, not because of me, but because of what? That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And he shares his, 
his 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 feelings of feeling inadequate but then when we go over here to chapter one it says that how god chooses chooses the foolishness of the world the foolishness of god is wiser than the men the weakness of god is stronger than men but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. Why do you think he's, he's done that? Because if you come in thinking that you are all that, you come in having all this information, you come in thinking that you know, like you, you the best of the best, the cream of the crop. Once, when, when you do well at it, you're not going to give God the glory. Again, you're going to say, I did it. I'm self-made. You hear all these rappers, all these, all these celebrities that goes on stage or you got the, the song says, I'm self-made, I'm self-made. You're not self-made. Even if you want to look at through it, through the lens of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of the world, you still didn't do it by yourself. You have people to help you. Somebody had to say yes to you. Okay. And after they said yes to you, you had a team of people. So don't like you are self-made even if you want to look at it through a worldly lens a viewpoint guess what you're still not self-made but see scratch that we're talking about the bible now so when we are weak and we are inadequate when we don't have the tools we don't know nothing we didn't go to, to school for it it's nothing but god because god has chosen the lowly things the foolish things of the world to despise the wise because he wants to say i want you to see that it was me god i want you to see that it was me who did it through you by my grace by my mercy you didn't deserve it you wasn't qualified you right but because i did it for you I want you to give me the glory. God says, give me the glory. And that's why he chooses the foolish things. There's a man in the Bible named Moses. Now, this is a pretty large book or story. So I'm just going to only highlight all the times he was second guessing himself with God and how God reassured him that he is going to be with him. Right. So let's go ahead to Exodus. Exodus chapter three, we're going to start with uh, verse 11. Okay. And again, I'm only going to read the parts that Moses is, um, is, is really doubting himself. Okay. So one chapter three, verse 11, he says, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, God, I will certainly be with you. And this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, well, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Jump over to chapter four, verse one. Then Moses answered and said, but, 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 but suppose they not, they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, what is in that? What is in your hand? He said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And so he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses fled it, fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. OK, jump over to verse 10. The Moses said to the Lord, oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before neither before nor since you have spoken to your servants, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. So as you can see, Moses himself was a little 
apprehensive of, of, of moving forward in what God has called him to do. He felt inadequate. He felt like he was not qualified for the job. He questioned God over and over and over again, but God gave him reassurance that I will be with you. So we study the word of God and we can see that in the Bible, the people that God had used, which was the lowly things, which is the foolish things of the world, right? The people that weren't qualified, he still used but not just on a small scale, on a large scale. So when we in our everyday lives feel inadequate, we can come back to the Bible and read these stories to feel confident that God will be with us. We don't need to have anxiety. We don't need to worry. We don't need to be afraid. Although those are natural uh, feelings and emotions. I get it. But that doesn't mean we need to be so afraid of moving forward in it. Because God is there right with us. God is right there with us. We don't need to worry about that. Because the Bible says in Romans 8, 31, it says, When then shall we say to these things, If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? So even with Moses, he had to face Pharaoh. And all the Egyptians, but if God is for him, who will be against him when God is the one sending him out? Is God sending you out? Now, the question is, are we moving in the direction of what God has, has for us? <laughs> you know, that's the question. Do we have God's blessing? Is he backing us up? Because when we want to do things our way, we might not have the back above God because we're not doing things God's way. We're doing things our way. So we need to be careful with that as well. Are you moving in the right direction? Okay. But that's not the point of this, this message today. The point of the message is you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to feel um, inadequate. And even if, let's just say, let's just, okay, let's be real. Let's just say you are inadequate. Let's just say you're not qualified. You don't need to worry because you're going to, let God lead you. Let God control the situation. Let God calm you down and give you peace. All right? So that you don't have to feel anxiety. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, back out of it. You know what I mean? Let him lead you and guide you and walk with you and give you the words to say. Give you the movements. Whatever you need. Let God provide that for you. Amen. Well, again, I don't, once again, I'm not trying to take too much of your time. I just want to go ahead and talk about um, this topic, this emotion of inadequacy and how God can definitely help you out with that. So we came out of multiple scriptures today. We did, um, oh, goodness gracious. So I had to stop, guys, by, by video stopped on me. So right now I'm, I'm going backwards to say, <laughs> To see what we we went over, but anyway, we went over um oh oh First Corinthians that's what it was, it was First Corinthians right, yep. Oh we oh First Corinthians um one chapter one where we at? Come on, Bible, help me out here. Yes, First Corinthians chapter 1, we went over verses 25, uh, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. We jumped over um, to chapter 2, and we read a little bit pertaining to Paul and his testimony, right? Verses 1 all the way through maybe 5, right? We definitely did that. We went over to Exodus, and we uh, read out of... Uh, the story of Moses and we did chapter three, Exodus chapter three, uh, verses 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 jumped over to chapter four, verse one jumped over to verse 10, um, went over to verse 11, 12, right? There we go. 
those are our verses today, our scriptures today, our passages today. Um, read that, study that, those stories, um, so that you can apply uh, those scriptures to your life so that when you feel inadequate, you can be reminded that people in the Bible that God used, they also felt inadequate, but God was with them and God delivered them. And God uh, uh, gave them the, uh, what's the word? I want to call it success. Uh, they overcame it. Uh, whatever, whatever God had asked them to do, they did it and they did it well. How about that? <laughs> amen. <laughs> and he can use you too. Amen. 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 But anyway, I'm not going to hold you any longer. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or statements, please leave it in the comment box below. And I will hit you back up if you, you know, we could talk about things or whatever. Um, but if not, I want you guys to have a blessed uh, week. And I will see you again next time. And until then, y'all be blessed.